When it comes to prayer, I think we've complicated it. Praying in elaborate forms just creates obstacles and we will lose the desire to pray. Sometimes I find it hard to motivate myself to pray, even though I know how powerful it is. Praying based on God's Word and your spirit rather than form or man's invention of prayer is what pleases the Father. He doesn't want dry, barren, fancy, eloquent words, but vulnerability, authenticity, sincerity, and humility. Prayers that come from a simple place, a pure heart. The Lord's Prayer is a powerful tool to use as a guide for prayer. As you pray and use this as a guide, be specific. It is an amazing foundation for prayer time. Jesus taught us to pray this way, and if He prayed this way, we should all the more. When you pray, let it be interactive, pausing, talking, actively listening to the Holy Spirit for His thoughts and revelations of what is on the heart of Jesus. Let Him speak through His Word as well. Customize it. Each line is the foundation you build upon. Use this prayer as a guide for praying for everything, yourself, your nation, nations of the earth, your family, your work, unsaved loved ones you know. We're going to break it down phrase by phrase, and as the music plays, pray based on the phrase in each segment. Jesus said to the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane right before He began His journey to the cross, Could you pray with me? And they all fell asleep. I most likely would have been one of those that fell asleep. But the Lord is gracious and understands our humanity, thankfully. So he had to pray alone in his grief. And then he woke them up and said, Could you not tarry and pray with me for one hour? So there's no rule, of course, that says we have to pray a certain amount of time. That's legalism. But I find myself very undisciplined with my time in this age of distraction and busyness. So sometimes I'll intentionally set aside one hour or less. If you can do this even a few times a week, I think it will be a powerful time with you and the Lord. Don't make it legalistic. Just be intentional. Jesus loves being with us and partnering with Him in prayer. So I'll start each segment, and then for the rest of the segment, it will just be instrumental, and you pray what's on your heart and mind. So remember to be specific. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name, God. We come into your presence, Heavenly Father, with a deep sense of awe. We humbly acknowledge that you are our everything. We are nothing without you. You are holy. Thank you that you have allowed us to come before you because of Jesus Christ's great sacrifice and love for us. We come to you, God, through no strength of our own, but only through Jesus Christ. Turn the eyes of your heart now towards the Lord, giving your full undivided attention to Him. And spend this next segment just telling Him how much you love Him, how much you need Him, thanking, honoring, and worshiping Him.
thy kingdom come. Thank you, God, as believers in Jesus Christ, that we carry the kingdom of God inside of us. Luke 17, 21 says, Neither shall they look and say, Here it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Thank you, God, for that powerful truth. As you speak these words right now, thy kingdom come. Declare in faith that the kingdom of God is advancing despite obstacles which are in its way. Ask him for the fullness of his kingdom of glory to reign in you in a powerful way and that the kingdom of God would affect your sphere of influence. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you pray. Pray for God's kingdom to come, for it to be released in your family, your relationships, your workplace, your church, your neighborhood, your city, your nation, its leaders, and other nations, people groups, whatever you feel God is putting on your heart to pray, whatever's in your heart, with praying, thy kingdom come, O God, in your sovereignty.
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Expand on this phrase as you pray. Ask for revelation on how to pray, using the phrase, Thy will be done, not ours, which takes humility to pray. As it is in heaven, let that be the foundation of this prayer section. Declare, Thy will be done for things that concern you, your family, your church, your city, your nation, the nations of the earth, other things or situations, people. Thy will be done.
Give us this day our daily bread. John 6.35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Jesus Christ is the universal portion of bread. Bread was a powerful symbol of provision for his people in the Bible. He alone is our daily provision, whether we need actual food or if we need soul food. This phrase, give us this day our daily bread, is about both. He is the provider of both our natural and spiritual hunger. We need him to sustain us from day to day. So now pray for your needs and other situations that are on your heart regarding natural or spiritual hunger, emptiness or lack in your life or others. Let the revelation of Jesus Christ being the bread of life guide you as you pray.
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God's grace is endless. A broken and contrite heart is what the Lord loves. Self-righteousness will keep us from repentance. It is important for us to have conviction, not condemnation, never, ever condemnation, that is never from God. It's good to confess and be aware of our sins right away so they do not take root in us. Unconfessed sin opens the door for the enemy. We must also forgive others. It brings freedom. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal any hidden, unconfessed sin in your life. Allow the Spirit of God to shine His light in you. And if you are holding any unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, forgive and repent. Thinking we can hide our sins from God is unwise. We always want to be clean before Him. Sin is a barrier between us and God, so it is important to pray and ask for forgiveness. You might also use this time to repent and pray for forgiveness on behalf of your nation or other nations in our world, standing in the gap, crying out for God's mercy. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Psalm 141.4 says, Do not let my heart 
be drawn to what is evil. As humans, we often grasp for things that are unprofitable or sinful. We need God's guidance in this dark world to help steer us away from things that could harm our souls. God, may we guard the gateways of our eyes, our ears, our mouths, what we say, our thoughts, all the places where evil can enter. Deliver us also from the evils and lawlessness of this world. Pray this for yourself, your children, your spouse, your friends, saying, God, protect us from the temptations all around us. And also with this phrase in mind, you might want to pray Ephesians 6, 11 to 18, which is the armor of God over yourself and those you love.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. As we end, spend time declaring the works and ways of the Lord. Maybe declare some scriptures of his power and greatness and sovereignty. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ our Lord. It may mean walking through some challenging times to get there, but God is always with us. Declare his holiness. His kingdom is everlasting. He is in control. He is the desire of the nations. Bless the Lord, O my soul. God, you are sovereign, mighty, all-powerful. Your kingdom is advancing all over the earth. Salvation and glory and power belong to God alone. Our God will have the last word. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. And remember God's never-ending love for you and all that concerns you.